Hi, this is Gabe from Fluent Forever. And now that we're done with consonants, I want to talk about Dutch vowels. So Dutch vowels can be a bit tricky. There are a lot of them. But the better your ears get, the simpler they'll be to keep track of, and the better you'll produce them. My main goal here is for you to get familiar with the IPA symbols for these vowels, and then get a rough sense of how these sounds fit into your mouth. We'll be talking a little bit about tongue placement, and so just to give you a rough sense of that, I want you to try this. Compare e, e, and a in English, as in seat, set, and sat. You'll notice that your tongue starts up high, e, and then it goes to the middle of your mouth, e, and then goes down to a. So your tongue can go up, and it can go down. It can also go forward and back. So compare e as in bet and a uh as in butt. So your tongue goes forward for e, and then it pulls back for a. Uh, bet. But. So with that out of the way, let's get to Dutch. Dutch has six vowels that you're going to be pretty familiar with from English. Zer, e, i, u, a, e, e. The only thing really new here are the symbols. We'll start with e in IPA. E uses this big curly E symbol. It is effectively the same vowel you would use in English words like red and stem and shows up in Dutch in words like stem and vlek. Next, there's E. E uses a lowercase i in IPA. It shows up in English words like see and flee and in Dutch words like fiets and riem. Let's move to our next vowel. O, as in broek or snoop. Which shows up in IPA as a lowercase u. It should sound relatively familiar, as in English is snoop. Just be careful with it. In most accents of English, we actually start words like snoop with a different vowel. U, uh, it's the same vowel as in foot. So we go foot, u, uh, snoop, snoop. In Dutch, we go straight to u. So instead of snoop, it's snoop. Next up, a. Ah. This one shows up in English as in father and in Dutch in words like duck. And it is basically the same in both languages. After that, we have i as in English is sit and Dutch is vis. Again, this one is basically the same in Dutch and English. Last, we have the schwa, which is Almost the same between Dutch and English. In Dutch, it's e, uh, the last vowel in bezig, and trombone. The symbol in IPA is an upside down lowercase e, which is a symbol used in a lot of languages to indicate an unaccented, kind of indistinct vowel. In English, we use this exact symbol for a uh, as in about and a tree, the road. It sounds almost like a, uh, and it uses the same tongue position, just Instead of saying about, we say about. There's just less of an accent. In Dutch, the tongue position is somewhere in between that of English's a uh and English's i. So if you're trying to say the word trombone in Dutch, then you can start with an a uh sound, trombona, and then let your tongue drift up a little bit in the direction of i, trombona, trombone. You'll encounter the schwa quite often in typical Dutch sentences like this one. Ik ben bezig de trombone te bespelen, which means I am busy playing the trombone. Let's look at a kind of new vowel for English speakers. A, ah, as in sla or not. It's pretty close to the English word not. The Dutch variant a ah is a little more forward in the mouth than the American a. Ah. So your tongue is a little bit more towards the front of your mouth, about halfway towards the American a. Ah. We can compare Dutch's not to English's not and nat. So there's not, not, nat. Now I'd like to introduce you to a bunch of so-called rounded vowels. The Dutch makes a few vowels by taking a tongue position you already know. Say e with your tongue all the way up and in the front, e and then rounding your lips without moving your tongue. So if you take e, as in eat, and round your lips without moving your tongue, it should stay near the front as high as it can go. You get u, as in juweel, or futen, 
i u i u juweel voeten. If you start with e instead, where your tongue is all the way in the front, center position e and then round your lips. You get e as in freule or manoeuvre. You can also do this with the American vowel a uh, as in bum. Keep your tongue still in the back center of your mouth. Uh, and round your lips. Uh, oh, trombone, bum. Just to compare them directly, English has bum, Dutch has bum, bum, bum. Next, there's u uh, as in gum. This one is based on the tongue position of i. Your tongue should be near the front, fairly high up in your mouth. I, and then round your lips. U, gum. And that is our last Dutch vowel, at least the last one that shows up in words on its own. The last thing we actually have to discuss are combinations of vowels known as gliding vowels and diphthongs. We have these all over the place in English. Of our so-called five vowels, A, E, I, O, and U, three of them, A, I, and O, those are actually diphthongs. They're not single vowels at all. In American English, at least, we go A, I, and O. So Dutch, they also have quite a few diphthongs, which we'll go over in a moment. And as a quick aside, you might notice the little semicircles under the second vowel letter in these diphthongs. That symbol doesn't change the vowel at all. It's just there to tell you that the extra vowel, it's not an extra syllable. So you're saying A, I, and O, three syllables, and not E, I, and O, six syllables. So let's get back to Dutch. Dutch has a couple of gliding vowels that line up really well with English diphthongs. Those would be O, as in stro, and boat, which is basically the same as English's O, as in boat. Now, you'll notice that we're writing them differently in IPA, even though they sound almost identical. And we're doing that because it's what you're going to encounter in Dutch dictionaries. Dutch phonetic scholars refer to these vowels as potential diphthongs. In standard Netherlands Dutch, it's common to hear a very slight closing of the vowel towards its end. Which is why the standard Netherlands Dutch way of pronouncing boat sounds very similar to the English word boat. In standard Belgian Dutch, these vowels remain steady and unchanging. Because of this regional variance, it's standard practice to transcribe these vowels in IPA as a single vowel followed by this colon-looking vowel lengthener mark, where every Dutch person understands that if you're going for a standard Netherlands accent, you're going to put in some vowel gliding automatically. The next similar vowel is A, as in basem, and bait, which is basically the same as English's A, as in Bait. Falling under the same umbrella of gliding vowels is one very mixed vowel that will sound pretty foreign. This mixed vowel is O, as in roos. It's a rounded version of the familiar sounding A diphthong. So your tongue is going to do the exact same thing as an A. You're, you're starting out a bit higher than E. It's not E, but rather A. And your tongue is going to finish in the position of I, so it's not going all the way up to E, as in A, it's A, it ends at I, A, A, and then the hard part. You're going to do that exact same tongue motion, but now you've got to round your lips. That gives you O, as in roos, or koken. So English has A, and Dutch has O, A, O, bail, bail. Next, we have a couple of diphthongs that are similar, but slightly different from some diphthongs in English. The first of those would be a, as in gay, and bait. This one is super similar to a, as in bait. But you're starting from a tongue position of a, the tongue starting out lower in your mouth. A. The other difference is that you're finishing the diphthong further up and in the front of your mouth, going all the way up to e at the end of a instead of ending closer to I. So the previous closing vowel we covered was A, and this one is the diphthong A, 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 bait, bait. The next similar diphthong is au, as in vrouw or blau. This one is similar to the English diphthong au, as in blouse. 
So same idea with this diphthong. In Dutch, you're starting from a tongue position of ah, which is a lower tongue position than we start with in blouse. So the English diphthong is ow, and the Dutch one is ow. You may also notice that the ending point in this vowel is a bit different. Dutch goes a bit further up and back in your mouth, closer to oo at the end. Ow. Comparing Dutch and English, it's ow and ow. Blau. Blouse. The third diphthong is rounded and quite different from any English diphthong. It's basically a rounded version of one diphthong we just covered. A as in bait. This diphthong is o as in bouse. It's a combination of o, a rounded e vowel, and u, a rounded e vowel. If you make both of these sounds in a row, o, you get o, as in bouse. Mastering that diphthong is mostly a matter of mastering those two component sounds first, and then getting used to sticking them together. So if you want to compare the first rounded mixed vowel we covered to this one, you can compare kogen to Kogen, Kogen, Kogen. Now for some new vowel combinations. So first off, a relatively simple group of them. Basically, take an A, an O, an U, or an O, and then stick an E at the end. And you'll get I, as in hi, Oi, as in moi, Ui, as in hui, and Oi, as in Hoi. For all of these, make sure you go all the way to E at the end and you'll be good to go. Then there's a group of vowel combinations ending in an R sound. Ear as in beer, ear as in steer, or as in spore, er as in der, and oor as in moor. Basically, when you have an R that comes after a vowel, it's going to affect that vowel, mostly by adding in an er sound after it. There are a couple of other situations where a final consonant will affect the preceding vowel. If you have a word that ends in an L and has either a closed E sound or a schwa before it, the vowel sound will be affected. In a word like gale, the transition from saying the A to forming the L in the back of the mouth causes a very slight gliding in the sound toward an I sound. Gale. This is a glide that your tongue is going to do automatically, and therefore it's not reflected in the IPA. I just want to bring it to your attention so that you're aware of it. When you have a word that ends in E-L, which is transcribed as a schwa, you can clearly hear that the schwa sound opens up into this kind of rounder vowel, almost like an open A. Like in the word apple. It's still transcribed as a schwa in IPA, but as you use our app, you'll clearly hear our Dutch speakers observing this slight vowel modification. And again, I just want to draw your attention to that ahead of time. And with that, we've covered all of the Dutch vowels. So let's review. We began with six familiar vowels that are basically the same in Dutch and in English. They were... E as in stem. E as in fiets. U as in broek. The big thing to remember for this one is to make sure you're only saying one vowel. U. Instead of a mix of vowels like u, u. Then there was a as in duck. Then e as in vis. And last, the schwa. The last vowel in bezig and trombone. This was similar to the English a uh, as in about, just a bit more in the direction of i. Trombone. At this point, we've covered the long a ah, as in sla or not. This one had a tongue position in between a ah, as in not and a ah, as in nat. After that, we covered four rounded vowels, where you take a tongue position you know and then round your lips. There was the rounded e, u as in juweel or futen. The rounded e, e as in freule or manoeuvre. The rounded a, uh, o oh, as in trombone or bom. And the rounded i, e, u uh, as in Hum. After that, we introduce you to the Dutch gliding vowels and diphthongs. Two of those were basically the same as English diphthongs. O as in stro, and A 
as in bezem or beet. And then we covered a gliding vowel that sounded pretty foreign. O as in beul. Your tongue follows the path of the familiar-sounding diphthong a, but you're going to round your lips. A, o, bail, bail. Then there were two diphthongs that were slightly different from familiar English diphthongs. A, as in gay, and bait. This one starts out at e uh, and ends i, a. And au, as in vrouw or blau. This one starts out at a and ends at u, au. And then we went over a rounded diphthong. This one's a rounded version of a, as in bait. This one is au, as in baus. It's a combination of u, a rounded e vowel, and u, a rounded e vowel. O, baus. Then we introduced four vowel combinations that just take Dutch vowels or diphthongs and stick an e at the end. I, as in hi, oi, as in moi, oi, as in groei, and oi, as in hoi. And then we covered a big group of gliding vowels ending in an er sound. Eer, as in beer, ear, as in steer, or as in spore. Ur as in deur, and oor as in moor. Finally, we covered how two vowels, a closed e sound and the schwa sound, are affected when followed by an l. Like kale and apple. Remember that you will hear a natural vowel modification due to the presence of that l at the end of the word. And with that, we are done with all of the sounds of Dutch. Next up, a small handful of spelling rules. <laughs> 